Greetings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Welcome here today. Thank you for taking part in today's Eucharist. As you know, it is a central part of our service and our faith. And for those of you who took part within the Eucharist, I'm quite sure your temperature is rising as you have just taken the blood of Jesus Christ, which was spilt on the cross. You've taken part in eating of the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. So be joyful in your celebration of the Eucharist. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. Today I have come to plant a seed with the hope that it will bring you a great harvest. And that harvest comes from within. Um, I received a, an email from somebody, um, Joanne, who asked if, uh, who, who simply asks, uh, Father, I listen to your services regular, but I have always wondered where you actually are in the world. Uh, well, that's easy to answer. We're here in Birmingham, in England, United Kingdom, and uh, we go worldwide. So we are uh, privileged and grateful to be allowed to come into your living room, into your office, into your space, as well as those who are joining us within this service today. So, Joanne, I hope that answers your message that we are here in Birmingham, England, United Kingdom, and we welcome your uh, time with us as we go through this service today. Uh, I also received another email, um, uh, and this email was talking about our lighting, uh, and I don't know if it was a dig at the, at the technicians, but I'm not taking it that way, and I'm praying that they don't take it either that way either. But the email goes and asks the question, why don't we set the light where there isn't a shadow behind me? Well, many of you will know that I've said it a thousand times, and I'll say it another thousand times. I'm hoping and praying that at some point through a service, maybe not this one, maybe tomorrow, maybe the one after, that you will see more than one shadow behind me, that you will see at either a glance, that you will see a second shadow standing beside me. And you know who I talk of. I talk of the Lord Jesus Christ, coming of the shadow within and the shadow beside me and that's what I hope and pray that will come to you also so I hope that um, that answers the questions for the uh, people who have sent those emails and please keep sending the emails into the address that's coming up on the screen uh, below and uh, you know we'll try and answer where, where we can and if we can't we'll pray on the matter hallelujah Praise be to God. So good to see so many of us, so many of you with us here today. Today's message comes in two parts. The uh, previous message that we did was talking about forgiveness. And it's only right to move from forgiveness into uh, the two parts that we're going to look at today, which is the resurrection and also death. Yes, death. Something that we we all know about, we've all come across, and we're all going to face. And um, it's about making sure you're ready. It's about making sure that that word death doesn't instill a fear that stops you from seeing through the colored glass. Because many people will hear the word death and will automatically look through the colored glass. And they have many thoughts and beliefs of their own into what happens at death. But as I've said already, that those of you who took part in the Eucharist, how you took part in the body of Christ, and how the blood was his body, it's celebration and how his blood was the sacrifice for you and I. 
So uh, we're going to try and put it into two um, services, two messages. I'm not going to be able to get it all into this time. As you know, our time is short. It's our own enemy that we deal with here today. But I want to plant that seed that gives you an opportunity. I want to start with today's message with a simple verse. And it's in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. And it simply says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I want to leave that verse with you with the hope that it will develop itself through today's message. Every preacher has a day when he starts his sermon research and finds that the manifestation takes him to an outer mind experience. Takes you to an outer mind experience. And I've had this on many occasions where the Lord has sat me down and he's began to guide my fingers and my mind as to where he wants me to settle. He wants me to revisit. He wants me to uh, uh, give to others. It's easy to put words on a paper, but it is more intense when you are researching many verses, many chapters that still give you a new vision every time you revisit it. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. Praise you today, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. Amen. When I revisit parts of the Bible, I become stronger. I become stronger in the knowledge and the wisdom that it offers me. I am renewed by the power of its presence in my life and how I try to give to others that same power of life. But to some, it's the most scariest part of their journey. The thought of death brings an immediate fear, a opportunity of not being able to continue, not being able to finish what you started. Today I want to talk about death, but not only death, but also the resurrection, hallelujah, the resurrection of you and I. But most, most people, as soon as you hear the word resurrection, your thought automatically turns to Jesus Christ and the crucifixion and the resurrection that he went through for you and I. I preached on this the other day where we spoke about forgiveness and I explained, I spoke about um, the two parts of the description of repenting. I spoke about the regret and also the remorse. The two cannot exist without each other for the two become one in the repenting. The regret is to consider the actions and also the consequences. The remorse is the understanding that we were weak or we were tempted or we were easily led or guided to the wrong side of the road. And within that service, it was a very graphic service, we, we showed illustrations and clips that could only open your mind to what God has for you in the presence of your own journey. Amen? 
We read in Genesis of how we are in the image of God. We were made in, in his image. But the existence of man we know also came from the dust. We all come from the dust and we shall all return to the dust. And it's just a time and part of our journey that we have to take part in. By the actions of Adam and Eve, death becomes our enemy. And it will be the last enemy on our journey. How do we say it's an enemy? It's an enemy for quite a few reasons which I'm going to explain to you in a moment. I'm going to explain to you how if you allow it to overcome you, it will become your downfall. If you believe that there is nothing after this earth, it will become your downfall. How is it our enemy? It is it because it separates us. It separates man from his body. And when I say man, I use the word widely. I don't want to read any emails of my about me being sexism. Sexist, sorry. Uh, when I say man, I talk about man, woman. But as I've said, it separates us from the body. Death. It's also because it's the result of sin. A moment ago I spoke to you about Adam and Eve and the actions that they took would change the destiny of life. It would change the foundation that we would have been on had they not done the actions that they did. And so by their actions, death became an enemy and is the result of sin. For Adam was not due to die, Eve was not due to die. In God's creation he did not specify a time for Adam and Eve to die before they had done the wrong. He had a lifetime of existence for them. And that lifetime was continuous. But because of the actions that they carried, because they, eat, they didn't listen to God, they ate from the fruit, they listened to Satan, they allowed Satan to um, confuse them to the point now where the foundations are now changing. And so it becomes a sin. The result of sin, the, the, Satan's attack on man who was created in the image of God. For the fellowship with God. But Satan has come in through the cat flap in order to catch Adam and Eve, which is the knock-on effect to you and I. So we will all face death, and death will be a final call on this earth. That is true. But death, the enemy, and how it becomes our enemy, is because it separates us from our loved ones. Nobody's ever called death a friend. Nobody's ever looked at death and said, I am glad you are here. Nobody's ever said death was a reward. So it separates us from our loved ones. But it's also the enemy because it ends the ministry and often makes life seem fruitless and without purpose. And it's because if man, because if men are without Christ 
it is sending into collision collision with death to be the final opportunity but for the believer there is a deliverer and a victory and the deliverer is the one who will guide us through that death Jesus Christ was the deliverer over to death let's take a look please now in the book of Romans hallelujah take a look with me please in the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 25 with me please Amen. And the preacher began to say, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Read it again. Read it again. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. We had lost the opportunity of sitting on the right hand side of God because of our weaknesses and our sin and our denial of the, of the truth. And so God gave up on us. God gave up on us a long time ago. Amen. Because he'd given us chance after chance and chance after chance. But he said, there is one more chance I'm going to give you. And so that was then when he sent his begotten son in order to come and fulfill where those were in denial. Amen. So he was delivered over to death. Today I wanted to talk about that opportunity. I want to take two words out of that verse and just read sin and justification. The Jews would bring offering of sacrifice with the belief that this would be the justification for their sins that they would come and bring the lamb to slaughter the ox and this would be the reward given to cleanse their sins. Can I just point something out? You cannot justify. You cannot justify sin. You can't do it. There's no way that if you have done a sin, you can justify it. But these people of the times believed that this was the ritual that would give them penance which would raise or lift the sin from them remember the only way is to repent the only way is to touch with God and to deliver a sacrifice of the present. God doesn't want you to slaughter an animal in order to get penance or to have uh, the Lord forgive you. But these people of the time just didn't understand that. They saw this as the way of a ritual that was picked and used from old rituals which were idols against God. Let me give it to you 
from the Gospel. Let's go for a Bible read into the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and we're going to look at verses um, 12, sorry, 11 and 12. Are you there with me? I'm just looking for... Somebody was supposed to sort this out for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, but it seems that... Uh, So let's go for a uh, Bible read, please, in the uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. And it's the offering of sacrifice. Day after day, every pre priest stands and performs his re religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand side of God. Let's read it again. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. But when this priest had offered for all time one sin, one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand side of God. Man had let God down. Nothing can change or nothing would have changed if Jesus hadn't come. If Jesus hadn't come to justify and to become the bridge that would take us to Calvary. Sorry, to, and the bridge that would take us to heaven. You need to be alive with Christ. You need to be of his belief. You need to be happy with who you are in Christ. Because many temptations, many destructions, many trials, many tribulations are coming your way if you are in the hand of Christ. Because this is the time when Satan is trying to pull you away. And will use many descriptions in order to keep you away from God. I want us please again to go for the Bible. I want us please to have a look now in Galatians chapter 2 and I want to look at verses 13 and 15. Amen. Are you there? And the, and the preacher read, When you were dead, in your sin and in the uncircumcised of your flesh God made you alive with the des desert to be called an apostle because I have presented the church of God but by the grace of God am I what I am and his grace to me was not without effort no I worked harder than all the others yet not I but the grace of God that was within me whether then it is I or they is what we preach and this is what you believe hallelujah read it again for I may have stumbled time is short but time is on your side you need to be alive in Christ for he is your bridge 
He is the only way you're going to get into heaven. He went on that cross for you and I. Jesus was the deliverer and the bridge. Here we see in this short elevation the distinct difference between having God, being with Jesus, and being having Jesus becoming the bridge that made us become one in God. Without the bridge, we cannot get into heaven. Without you are taking control of your life by planting the seed, we will not get into heaven. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one come unto the Father but by me. We, as I've said before, let God down. And so the only way was to have Christ become the bridge for you and I to become one. We read again in John chapter 11 verse 25 to 26, I am the resurrection. He talks about I am the new life of the Spirit that comes now. Hello, we seem to have run out of time. So please look forward to the next part of this message, which goes and talks on. Please go on to watch how uh, Paul and uh, Barnabas, and how Paul himself goes through an uh, out-of-body experience. Join us again very shortly. Go now in peace. Go now in the name of the Lord.